All right, we're back, guys. We are here, uh, ready to do 11.5. Hopefully that first section went well for you. Uh, did the quizzes uh, on that uh, first section. Uh, we're gonna get into uh, measures of central tendency and variation. Some of this you've certainly seen before with mean, median, and mode. I know you have seen that. Uh, just remember now, when finding the mean, if you're gonna do it by hand, you're basically just gonna add up the numbers that you have here. Now again, if you add up the numbers that we have here, we say we have 5, 6, 10, 12. We have 12 if we add up all the numbers. So then we divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Divide by how many there are. We take 12 divided by 7. So we just be shy of 2, of course. Now, median, what you want to do on a median if you're doing it by hand, of course, is to put them in order. 0, 0. Uh, we have 1, 2, 2, 3, 4. Now, the median, of course, is the middle number. So as we count from both sides, 1, 2, 3, okay, here's the middle number right there. The median there would, of course, be 2. Now, the mode is the one that occurs the most often. So what you're going to have here, the one that occurs most often, this one is what we call bimodal, because there's two of them. And there can be more than one, and there could be none. In this case, we would say the mode would be 0 and 2. There's two of them there, because those are the ones that occur the most often. Okay, we'll get to some calculator ways of figuring out those in just a minute, but let's just worry about understanding how to do them kind of by hand, and then we'll worry about the calculator part. All right, this one, if we're going to do the mean here, we're going to add these up, and if I add up the numbers here, I believe I get 26, and if I divide that by 4, that gives me 6.5 is the mean, of course, that we get there. All right, now the median, again, if I put them in order from least to greatest, 3, 6, 8 and 9. Now here's the thing, when you have an even number, well if I count 1, 2, well there's not really a middle number, so it's in between those two, we would say that the median would be 7. So it's quite possible to get an answer that isn't part of the data set. And in this case the median would be 7. So if it's an even amount, get to the middle, divide those two numbers, find the average of those two. Now this is a case we just talked about, is that the mode, each number occurs once, so there isn't a mode, there isn't one that occurs most often. For the mode here, of course, we would say there is none. None is what we would say there, okay? All right, so that's with small data sets, with friendly numbers. Very easy to just crank them out by hand. And again, like I said, we'll get to a second uh, when we have maybe a higher data set, uh, maybe some unfriendly numbers. We'll show you some calculator strokes that you can use uh, to do that. All right, now, if we have something like this, a weighted average, okay, something like this, we have a chart. Uh, there's a rating of four, three, two, one, zero stars. Eight of them, uh, we had four stars. So what you have to do is you have to multiply the eight times the four, because that's 32 stars. All right, and then 12 times three, that's 36 stars. 14 stars, there's two stars and zero. Now, if you add up the number of stars, there's 84. Now, the number of movies, that's how many we had. So there's 30 of them there. So the average rating is 2.8 stars. Now the mistake that people make is they'll just say, oh, let's just add up the stars, four, three, two, one, zero, take the average. Well, remember they're weighted because we didn't have an equal amount. Uh, we had 12 of them here, eight of them here, seven there, so you have to weight those. So just multiply those and you'll be all set. Pretty easy stuff that we did there. Uh, same kind of thing as we go with expected value. That's the same thing as really the average. Uh, in a probability distribution, remember that's gonna show you all the possible outcomes. So your probability is gonna be one, so when you add up all the probabilities, you're dividing by one. So all you have to do simply on a probability distribution is take the chart, and basically you just have to multiply these together. So in this case, we have zero. Uh, we have three over 20. In this case, two times one-fifth would be two-fifths, and three times a half would be three-halves. Now, again, if we put those together with uh, common denominators, uh, zero don't have to worry about, but 20 would be the common denominator. Three over 20. Now again, five to convert that, we have to multiply by four, so that'd be eight over 20. And then this would be 30 over 20. And if you add up those together, you're gonna get 41 out of 20, which is approximately 2.05. So that's, your expected value is to get 2.05. Now I know what you're saying. You can't make 2.05 free throws. Again, it's an average, so sometimes you can't get an actual outcome when you do an average or an expected value. Okay, so again, those are some things hopefully seem familiar. Uh, the next major thing we're gonna get to is uh, called a box and whisker plot. All right, now on a box and whisker plot, what you wanna do is you wanna get these five numbers, and I'm gonna show you on the calculator how if you put in the data set, it'll give you these numbers. 
And basically what you do is the first quartile, so that's the 25th percentile. So it's basically the median of the first half is what you have here. That's where the box starts. The median is the middle number, which we talked about before. Now the third quartile is the median of the upper 50%, okay, the third quartile. And then of course we have the max and the minimum. So we could have the box and the whisker here. Now the reason that we have this is it kind of is a nice visual display of how the numbers are kind of spread out. And we're gonna to get to this thing called the interquartile range, the IQR. And the reason that we use that is that sometimes if you just do the range, now remember the range is just the maximum minus the minimum. But what can happen there is if you have an outlier, an extreme value, it can make it look like the data set is more spread out than it actually is. By focusing on that box, really that's what the interquartile range is. How wide is the box there? Uh, you're, made, you're focusing on that middle 50%. It's another way of showing how spread out the numbers are, and that way outliers don't affect that. That's another descriptive statistic that we can use uh, when we do that. Uh, but again, finding all those things, pretty easy peasy. Remember, to find the interquartile range, just take the third quartile number and subtract the first quartile number. It's really a simple process of what we can do. So um, let's kind of get to how we would do that, and uh, we'll kind of get some data set here. All right, now what we're gonna do, and I've already done this, and we'll get to this in just a second, is that uh, this is your data set right here. All right, now if you wanted to by hand, you certainly could put these in order from least to greatest, and you could certainly do that, and that would work out just fine. Let's just do that really quickly here. Let's do a four, all right, and then uh, we have a six, and another six. I might just cross these off as we go, just to make sure I don't, oops, see, I already missed a five, so let's put that, I gotta put them in order. So we gotta go five, six, six. All right, then we've got a seven. All right, then we got a couple of eights. All right, then we got a nine. And then we end with a 10. Let's just count up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. So now what you can do is you can do the median right here, okay? Because we kind of know right here that four is the minimum, 10 is the max. That's pretty easy. Now the median here, one, two, three, four, okay, so seven is your median. All right, now what you're gonna do here is you're gonna find, don't include this point now, just go ahead and find the median of the first half. Well, that's gonna be right in between here, that's gonna be 5.5, that's the first quartile. And then in between here, we gotta find this number here, it's 8.5, that's gonna be the third quartile. All right, so if we make a box plot, well, yeah, make a number line first. Now when you do your number line, a lot of times I'll, I'll provide one for you, you'll have to pick it out, so not a big deal, you won't have to sketch it out. Uh, but again, I would start with here, let's just go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Uh, again, if these were bigger numbers, more spread out, you could always increment these by fives or tens. Uh, again, always make sure you have an equal increment so that way you don't have distorted picture. All right, so I always start with the box first. We're gonna go 5.5 to 8.5. And there we go, right there. The median is at seven. And then your whisker goes out to the minimum right there, and goes out to the maximum right there, and there's a box and whisker plot. Now, if we were doing the interquartile range, we would just take the third quartile, which is 8.5, and we would subtract the first quartile, 5.5, meaning that the interquartile range is four, which means, yeah, we're not too spread out here. Four is, is the range of the middle 50%. Works out pretty nice. Okay, now again, we can get these same numbers, and again, when you're saying that, you're like, oh, yeah, what if we have a large data set or a lot of times numbers that aren't so friendly, uh, can we use the calculator? Well, of course we can. And so let's go back, I'll go back to my computer here. Let's get the calculator out. We'll kind of walk you through this. This is kind of a little slick process. And I don't think it allows me to hit this here. Let's see, no. All right, so I'll turn that off. I'll be right back to my computer. I'll talk loud so you can hear it. So once again, we're gonna hit stat, all right, and edit, of course, I've already typed in the numbers. Just put them in list one. Just put all your numbers, your data set right in here. All right, and then you're gonna go back to stat, which we've done before, you know, and then go over to calculate. Now, remember, we used this before when we were doing regression, but look here, one variable stats. That's what we need to find. All right, so now as we move forward, uh, it's telling us which list, yeah, it should be L1. We're gonna calculate that. And there we go. Now there's all sorts of tidbits here. Uh, X with a bar over, that's the mean, that's seven. All right, so when we get down to this later, 
this little sigma, it's kind of a fancy O as I sometimes refer to it. This is going to tell us the standard deviation. Okay, we're going to talk about that. 1.8 is the standard deviation. That is a measurement as well as how spread out the number. The smaller that number is, means the less spread out it is. All right, so now as we scroll down to see the arrow right there, we can just scroll down. Look at this. We got all of the numbers that we need right here for our box and whisker plot. Look at that. The minimum's four, first quartile, median, third quartile, and the maximum. The one thing that the TI doesn't do is it does not give us the mode, uh, but that's something we can pick out pretty easily, I think, if we don't have too large a data set. But here are the numbers you need for your box and whisker plot right here. They're all right there. It's really nice. So again, reviewing that, remember, as we move forward, when we find the, uh, the standard deviation, this is what it is right there. It's that fancy O. It's that fancy O. That's for that that we're looking for, so that's the number. Now again, it's also gonna talk about the variance. Now remember that the standard deviation here, uh, we'll kinda of talk about this, is that the variance is just this number squared. That's all that is, so if it asks you variance, that's what it's looking for. All right, other things. Basically, this number here, 63, that's if you add up all the numbers. Here's if you add up all the numbers squared, that's for other statistics down the road. But again, this is another key one here, the mean. The mean right here is right there, mean and standard deviation right on that screen along with your we call a five number summary as we compute that. So we're in good shape there with the calculator. Great tool to use, very awesome as we get going. All right, so let's talk about some data sets here. Now, as we take a look at the data set in the red there, uh, we're gonna see here that, yeah, um, 19, 20, 21, those are, um, those are your data sets uh, in 0, 20, 40. Now, they are, look very similar in the fact that, well, if I did the mean, well, the mean would be 20 and the mean would be 20 there. Now again, that doesn't tell the whole story, does it? Uh, this is a pretty tight group. This is pretty spread out. So that's why there's the importance of defining statistics that describe data sets. That's where that standard deviation comes in. This one's gonna have a very low standard deviation. This one's gonna have a quite, quite a bit higher one, meaning that it's more spread out. Okay, so as we look at those values, um, let's see, let's turn my, I'll see back down, there we go. Here we go, measure of standard deviation, there it is, okay. So remember, standard deviation is that fancy one. We just showed you that on the calculator. All you have to do is square that to get the variance. That's some other numbers. More, more we're gonna more focus more a little on standard deviation for a descriptive statistic. All right, all right, so there we go, we got that. Um, just so you understand what the calculator is doing, if we were to compute the standard deviation by hand, what we would have to do is first of all find the mean of the data set. And it worked out pretty well here that it ended up being seven. But uh, then what you'd have to do to find how, it's basically finding like the average of how far each number is away from the mean. Uh, we do a lot of mean-based statistics. Uh, is that we'd have to take each number and subtract the mean. Now mind you that we have, if it's less than, then we're gonna have a negative. Greater than it's gonna be a one. If it's they're equal, it's gonna be a zero. Now, the reason that we don't just add up these differences is that we'd end up getting zero, which doesn't really tell us anything. So in the statistics, a lot of times to make numbers positive is that we just automatically square everything. Okay, so we just square all the numbers. And so this is the differences squared. Well, then what we'd have to do is to find the variance. The variance is what's the average of all those differences squared? And then of course, since we squared it, we want to take the square root, and that gives us what the standard deviation is. So remember, the calculator will just tell us this. This is kind of a long process, especially if you have a big data set and not so nice numbers. Uh, but then that's going to tell you that variance. Again, that was we anticipated. It wasn't very big. Um, and then the standard deviations there are variance here, and that's what we have to figure out. So we'll be able to use that on the calculator. I would suggest using that all the time. Don't go through that method. All right. now. Let's talk about outliers. Now, I think we've referred to those before as that those are numbers that kind of stand out either really exceptionally high or exceptionally low away from the data set. There is an actual definition of what those are, and it's that an outlier is a value that is more than sta three standard deviations above or more than three standard deviations below the mean. So that's kind of a nice little definition that you have. All right, so let's take, let's take a look at that. And sometimes they're pretty obvious, sometimes not. Now again, in manufacturing, a lot of times we have quality control processes and we'll measure the heights of cans and want to make sure that they're somewhat consistent, but there's no way in the world they're all going to be exactly the same. That just doesn't happen. Uh, but again, you can kind of see what these are and you might be saying, all right, is, is there an outlier? 
Well, as you look through the data set here, well, yeah, may, maybe 92.1. Doesn't seem ridiculously low, but let's see what happens here. If we were to put these into the calculator and combine and found the mean and the standard deviation. Now, again, the mean is right here, 92.7. All right, the standard deviation is this one right here, the fancy O, as I call it, it's a sigma, Greek letter sigma. 0.19 is what that is. All right, so in order to see what would cons what would uh, constitute an uh, outlier is we're gonna take this, we're gonna see here, here's the mean. So we're gonna take three times the standard deviation. We're gonna add that to the mean, we get 93.355. So any number bigger than that is an outlier. We're gonna take that uh, three times 1.195, that's 0.585. And if we subtract that from the mean, any number that's less than that would be considered an outlier. So as we looked here, 92.1, yes, that would be below that. So yeah, 92.1 would be considered an outlier. It wasn't maybe an obvious one, but yeah, it does fit the definition of what that is. So again, to find an outlier, find the mean first. Find the standard deviation. Take three times the standard deviation, add that to the mean. Any number above that's an outlier. Take three times the standard deviation, subtract that from the mean. Any number below that would be an outlier as well. Okay. So I think that wraps up everything that we need to know here. Um, again, sometimes we want to talk a little bit about what happens uh, with outliers. Uh, what happens if I remove the outlier? What effect does it have? Now the outlier, this one was low. So what's it, what's it going to do is it's going to always drag the mean towards it. Outliers pull the mean towards it. So what's going to happen is, is that if I remove that outlier, so this is with all the data, but if I remove that 92.1, Look what happened to the mean. Now it did jump up, you know, not, not a ton here, but it did, it did go back up because I removed an artificially low value, okay? Now, uh, with standard deviation, anytime I remove an outlier, uh, it's gonna make the standard deviation go down because it's not gonna be as spread out, it's gonna be a less spread data, so the standard deviation will always go down when you remove an outlier, all right? So, but the, the outlier will pull the mean towards it, so if it's low, it'll make the mean lower than what it should be. If it's high, it'll pull it up higher uh, and make it a little higher. So by removing it, if it's above the mean, it would actually make the mean go down if you remove that higher outlier is what happens there. Okay, well that takes care of 11.5. Try the worksheet that we have there. Check it with the key. It's great. Uh, and then we'll see you next time for 11.6. For Thank you. See you next time.